We wear diapers during two periods of our lives, at the beginning and at the end. And as we pass the point when the second set of diapers is closer to our present than the first, we start to get nostalgic, longing again to feel that wide-eyed wonder we experienced as children. Items that take us back to the day which sound and look like the ones we drooled over as kids or teenagers suddenly become attractive again. Maybe they were things we dreamed of but couldn't afford. Maybe they remind us of a place, person, or time we miss. Whatever our fascination with retro is, at its root is our attempt to regain our innocence. And so motorcycle manufacturers know that a bike that reminds a bunch of middle-aged guys of their carefree youthful days is a surefire way to move inventory. The companies sell a ton of these bikes and we old farts get to putt around pretending we're young, or trying to. Everyone wins. And being 48 and well on my way to old fartdom, I certainly appreciate a beautifully crafted retro. But there has been one bike that has flown under my radar because you simply don't see a lot of them. The Kawasaki W800 has always been a bike I found very attractive, so when I got the chance to ride it for a week, I jumped at it. So what is this bike like to ride and live with? Stay tuned for the full details, and if you enjoy this channel, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with friends. I grew up in Poland in the early 80s where motorcycles were simple, air-cooled, and classic looking. And those bikes will forever define to me what a motorcycle is supposed to be. Don't get me wrong, I love modern bikes with their modern tech and performance, but when I see a classic looking European style motorcycle, I can't help but wax nostalgic. With all that in mind, the Kawasaki W800 has to be one of the most legit retro bikes on the market. This is a throwback to the old Kawasaki W series, which was in production from 1967 to 1975 and which was based on the BSA A7. When the retro bike craze was in full swing back in the 90s, Kawasaki introduced its homage to the old W series in 1999, the W650, a beautiful machine with old school charm. This was around the time that Triumph was reviving the Bonneville and I remember many testers commenting at the time that Kawasaki got the classic British style more right than Triumph. Ironic. The W650 was discontinued in 2007 but then revived as the W800 in 2011. And here we are. And my, isn't this a beauty. It may be the best looking retro motorcycle produced today. It's actually made of metal with chrome accents and chrome fenders, be still my heart. The proportions of the profile are perfect with a 19 inch front and 18 inch rear wheel. I love 18 inch rear wheels. The engine is air cooled with zero radiators, not even an oil rad. And yes, that is a real bevel drive powering the single overhead cam. The gauges are analog and those pea shooter exhausts are straight out of the wild one. Finally, the big round headlight completes the bike and the fit and finish is beyond reproach. Kawasaki knocked this design out of the park. The looks are as legit as the engine. The W800 has a 773cc parallel twin which puts out an A2 friendly 47 horsepower and 44 pound-feet of torque and is truly one of the most unique motorcycle motors produced today. While most parallel twins either have a vanilla 180 degree or a V-twin like 270 degree crankshaft, this one goes fully retro with a legit 60s 360 degree crank and the cylinders moving in unison just swapping power strokes. The sound is pretty unique for the class and the power plant has plenty of old school character. The stock exhaust note is on the quiet side, and I'd love to try some slip-ons to free up some decibels. No, this engine is not super powerful, but is beautifully built, purrs, barks, and pops frequently, and can push this bike well above the 100 mile per hour or 160 km per hour mark. I hear. It's got decent acceleration. and has that retro agricultural feel that denotes true character. If you're into the slickest and most modern smooth motors, this won't appeal to you. But if you want just a hint of clunky vibration to remind you that there are pistons powering your forward momentum, this bike delivers. The vibes never get unpleasant or tiresome, but do add a touch of nostalgic character. 
Those vibes do, however, cause some blurring of the mirrors which didn't matter too much as this simply blurred my view of my elbows. The handlebars are narrow which would make this a good lane splitting machine, but that narrowness makes your arms block the mirrors. If this was my bike, I'd try some bar ends for more style and utility. The gearbox on the W800 is typically Japanese slick with a light clutch pull and extremely smooth shifts. Almost too smooth. On a retro machine, a nice clunk would have been appreciated. As would a sixth gear. This bike has five, and although they are well spaced out, highway cruising at higher than legal speeds has the engine spinning fast. Not a big deal because this is not a highway bike, but still noticeable. The suspension on the W is not adjustable in the front with 5.1 inches of travel and adjustable for preload in the twin shocks which have 4.2 inches of give. The ride is pretty plush over most normal bumps at regular speeds. At the kinds of speeds most owners will ride this bike, it will behave predictably and navigate bends well. The brakes are good enough to stop the bike and the best thing I can say about them is that I didn't notice them, which means they perform their job without drama. The adjustable brake and clutch levers were a nice touch as I prefer a longer reach. The W800 weighs 496 pounds wet, which is average in the class, slightly lighter than most due to its air-cooled engine. No extra cooling systems to add weight. Handling is decently quick for a motorcycle of this size, which may be due to the rider sitting relatively forward on the bike. Some bikes you sit in and some bikes you sit on, and the W800 is definitely the latter. The seating position is forward and you don't get much of a view of the front of the bike because you're so close to it. The reach to the bars is natural and the rider's feet are underneath the seat with plenty of legroom. The seat is a lowish 31.1 inches or 770 millimeters and the saddle is plush and comfortable for both rider and passenger. In fact, Brooke really liked the roomy back seat and passenger grab rails on the W and proclaimed it the most comfortable motorcycle of its type for a pillion. While the seat and position on the W800 were comfortable, the lack of wind protection and small-ish fuel tank prevent it from becoming a serious touring bike. The 15 liters it carries takes the bike 230 kilometers before the warning light goes on in slower back road riding, but the low fuel light comes on after a mere 190 kilometers of admittedly speedy highway cruising. However, with this wind blast, you don't want to do a lot of highway cruising on this thing and you don't really want to ruin those beautiful lines with a windshield. Tech, ABS and fuel injection. No gear indicator and no fuel gauge, which is fine with me. I grew up with four gears and a carburetor, not even dreaming of ABS. But riders more used to higher tech might miss some of the modern amenities. But hey, this bike doesn't just look retro, it is properly retro, which to me has a lot of charm and appeal. Yes, you can hustle it along at a good pace. In the 60s, motorcycles like this were the super bikes of their day, and you can still smoke most cars on this one. However, the W800 is at its best just cruising and enjoying the ride. Unlike bikes like the Z900, it doesn't try to goad you into acting a fool and breaking the speed limit every time out. It's mellow and pleasant and quite practical. In a city, it would make a great runabout. It's not too big and is narrow enough to slip through traffic. It'd be fun on a weekend run and looks good parked in front of the cafe too. It's no touring bike but you could pretend that you are your father or grandfather back in 1966 and take this thing across the country anyways. Why not? It's a Kawasaki and should get you where you're going without leaking oil or breaking down, which is more than you can say for the old motorcycles it was designed to look like. Is it all sunshine and rainbows? No. The mirrors kinda suck. The bike costs 9,200 US and 12 G's Canadian, which is a lot more than a Royal Enfield Interceptor, its closest rival. And like the Interceptor, the power is as retro as the bike, so if you're a wannabe Rossi, this bike ain't for you. In fairness though, the W800 is more comfortable for the rider and passenger than the Interceptor, and the fit and finish is clearly superior. I got a lot of looks and compliments on this motorcycle during my week with it. So as I head toward revisiting my diaper years, the Kawasaki W800 becomes more and more interesting. An easy cruise in the country, compliments at the local bike night or even a commute in style are growing more and more attractive. Would I pick this over most retros? Yes, probably. It's a good all-around bike and its strongest quality is looks, pretty much the most important thing when picking out a retro motorcycle. If you have some nice country lanes around where you live, you couldn't ask for a more appropriate and chill steed. 
So which brand's classics do you like best? Kawasaki, Triumph, Royal Enfield or BSA? Please share your thoughts in the comments below and enjoy your spring riding.